overview of loading a JSON file and an XML file into a Jupyter Notebook with Python 3. So I'm going to start here in Jupyter, where I've got a cell where I'm going to use two libraries. One is called JSON. That's not surprising since we're going to be playing with JSON files. And the other is called pprint. That's for pretty print. We'll see why that's important in a moment. So before we get to the, the meat of the topic of looking at this JSON file, I'm going to look at that as a plain text content. So let's, oh, I'm here in Jupyter Lab. I'm on the left-hand side opening up sample menu.json. And rather than the default editor, I'm going to use the uh, this plain text version. So here I can see that I've got the outer curly braces for a JSON object, and then I've got keys, and then after a colon, the value. In this case, it's a nested um, JSON file. So if we go back and, and take a look at that other option where we can open up with JSON, we'll see that it looks pretty different. I mean, this is, I have to say, this is very visually not intuitive, but then we can realize sort of like what's going on. Let's say you've got this root here that's the very top level, and then the first thing here is menu. Let's go back over to the other menu, other uh, screen. So menu, and it's telling us menu has three keys. Okay, so let's see how that works out. So we've got menu, and then, then there's a colon, and then there's a curly brace, and within this nested curly brace, there's three things. So it's a basically you have a dictionary of a key, and the value is a dictionary. So that's why this structure has three keys, the ID, value, and pop-up. And then we can expand pop-up. So we've got this little clicking menu here with the arrows. I can expand what that is. And it's basically showing us the nested structure of the JSON um, with dictionaries within dictionaries and list. And so there's, here it's describing us that there's items in a list. And that corresponds to this square bracket over here. So that's just a little visual tool that you can sort of like collapse this. This becomes pretty relevant when you have, you know, thousands of keys in your um, JSON file and you just want to visually navigate the tree structure. All right, now let's go back to our notebook and take a look at that, um, the use of that library. So I'm going to look at the JSON library, and there's a function there called load. And within the JSON load, it's looking for an argument that is a file handle. And so as a sort of shortcut to get there, we can give it the output of this open command. So the open and the name of the file, and we're going to open read only method, um, that passes back a file handle. And so rather than naming the variable the file handle and then passing the file handle variable to the load statement, we can just um, pass the output of open directly back to JSON load. So that's our first line. We're going to get back something, and we're going to have a variable that stores the output from that JSON load um, as the variable menu data. And the second line, we're going to print what that looks like using the pretty print um, library. Okay, so this is Pretty visually pleasing here. It's got the root of the, the JSON, and then there's the first key, and then a nested dictionary with three uh, keys, and then the values there of file, file, and pop-up as another nested dictionary with a list of three things. So that's pretty similar visually to what we had here in the plain text version. Uh, so, and so the reason for that is because um, we went through and uh, the person who wrote this JSON file manually formatted it with all these spaces and ordered it the way that makes it look visually pleasing. So it's visually easy to understand because of the indentation. So the pretty print library is trying to do that same thing um, and just lay out things as best it can. Right, so what is the use of this nested dictionary? That seems very complicated. Well, it is. So. The value is we can access elements in that file, uh, in that variable. So remember, we stored the output of the JSON to a variable called menu data. And then there are keys within that. So the first key, the top level key, is menu. So if I wanted to ask, what is the value associated with the key menu in this variable? Then I'd run this command and get back 
basically everything except the outermost key. And that's because there was just one, one top level key and one variable, and it's returning all the results back from that variable. So that should be pretty straightforward. Hopefully I didn't lose anyone on the idea of a dictionary with you can call the key. It gets a little more complicated when we realize that this thing returned a dictionary. So we got back a dictionary when we called that. And one of the things um, was called pop-up. That's one of the values present in the dictionary. So that, sorry, one of the keys. So that means we could call that key um, in this but we have to remember that we've already called the first key, menu. So this is the idea that if you go back up to the original data structure, you'll see it was a nested dictionary. So the outermost key was menu, and then within that was a dictionary, which had three keys, one of them being pop-up. And so when you access that uh, nested dictionary, what we get back is the elements that were within this value associated with pop-up. All right, so we can go all the way down. We can get into the menu item, and we can ask if it's a list. So let's go into the zeroth element, and that can returns us back another dictionary. And we can even go um, all the way into the innermost content and access the menu pop-up menu item zeroth element on click key and get back the value create new doc. So that's how you would access this element here um, within this really nested data structure. All right, so what if we, what if we wanted the pop-up key, but we didn't want to have to write all that out, all right? So I know that I want the word pop-up as a key, and there's only one of them, so why can't I just access that? That seems much more intuitive, right? So let's try that out. And that didn't work out. And the reason is because in the ver in the variable called menu data, there isn't a key called pop-up. There's only one called menu. Now, if we didn't know that, we could actually just check what are the keys associated with that variable. And it would Python would, would return one key in the list saying there's a thing called menu. Well, then you have to sort of like, remember, let's dive into what is the output of menu? What do we call that? Oh, it's this whole big thing. Well, if I didn't want to read that, I could ask the question, what are the keys of the dictionary returned when I ask for the menu? Well, there's three keys, the ID, the value, and the pop-up. So how does this work out in practice? Normally, when we're working with like huge JSON files and they're very complicated, it's a process of just sort of like working at the top level variable and then asking, what are all the keys? And then selecting the key that we're probably interested in and asking what are the list elements or the keys associated with that one? And you're just nesting all the way down. So you don't normally sort of visually navigate the structure like this uh, when, the, when the data structure is pretty complicated. Here we were able to do that because this was a relatively small uh, JSON file. But normally this is the sort of grunt work of doing detective to see, being a detective to figure out what are the keys and values that you're interested in.